Intensity of single slit diffraction patterns. Uh, consider the diffraction from a single slit of width A. Okay, so we have diffraction from a single slit of width A. So what we would like to know is the intensity on the screen. So as you know, we have parallel ray approximation holding in the Fraunhofer diffraction and these parallel rays will interfere on the screen and so what we need to do is to add up the contributions from each ray so we can add the electric field or magnetic field uh, contributions to get the maximum amplitude and the intensity which is proportional to the amplitude squared. Now uh, it can be shown that this intensity is the maximum intensity multiplied by uh, the square of sine phi over phi. So this is the uh, distribution of intensity on the screen. Now what is uh, this phi? Uh, remember that we have divided the slit into two, the upper half and lower half, and the path difference between the rays coming from upper half and lower half was A over 2 sine theta. So this was corresponding to this delta here. So that's A over 2 sine theta. So path difference divided by the wavelength is equal to phase difference divided by 2 pi. So we have this relationship. So the phase difference uh, between the two rays uh, reaching the screen will be a pi sine theta over lambda. So these are rays coming from upper and lower half interfering. So we're looking at the phase difference between the two. And this phase difference is what appears in this expression uh, sine phase difference divided by phase difference squared is our intensity distribution. So <clears throat> I'm going to uh, give a link for the proof of this intensity distribution. Basically, we have to look at the electric field phasers, add them up, and uh, the intensity will be uh, given by uh, uh, proportion. Well, it will be proportional to E max squared, so uh, electric field maximum a value squared. Uh, so the minima will occur uh, when we have pi a sine theta dark over lambda is equal to m pi. So uh, that will be, so it's a minimum, so therefore it's going to be the dark uh, band. And we're going to have sine m pi, so sine m pi will be zero so sine pi is zero sine 2 pi is zero etc so we have a uh, sine theta dark equals from this uh, condition m lambda divided by a so the pi's will cancel now remember that m cannot be zero here so if you have m zero that would be corresponding to central bright fringe not dark so we have m is plus minus one plus minus two etc so this basically recovers our destructive interference condition for the diffraction pattern so m equals to zero is bright and this function sine phi over phi which is called the sink function actually uh, behaves uh, as if as phi goes to zero limit phi goes to zero sine phi over phi becomes using L'Hopital's rule we take the derivative of the top cosine phi derivative of, the, of the, derivative of the bottom one cosine zero is one so we see that the intensity becomes maximum so <clears throat> this sink function squared multiplied by i max is the intensity distribution and if we plot this, we see that we have, as phi goes to zero, the maximum intensity. This is our central bright fringe. And uh, as we vary the phase angle uh, between phase difference between the rays coming from upper and lower house, we see this uh, distribution. So we have in decreasing uh, um, maxima in the uh, intensity as we go away from the uh, center of the screen and the center is our uh, bright. So this is our described by our sync function. So it's going to be as I max sync phi squared. Okay, <clears throat> so a derivation of this, uh, as I said, there will be a link to the derivation uh, in the description of this video. Now, 
<clears throat> Knowing that we have the single slit diffraction pattern intensity distribution, if we revisit our Young's double slit experiment, we, we can talk about intensity of two slit diffraction patterns. Now we have the combined effect of diffraction and two slit interference. Uh, so if you remember in Young's double slit experiment, we have an intensity distribution that's given by I max cosine square uh, theta or phi over 2, uh, where phi is the phase difference. Uh, and we have from the single slit diffraction uh, sine phi over phi uh, parentheses squared. So we, we can basically say that the total intensity has a contribution from uh, the double slit interference cosine square phi interference over 2 multiplied by the diffraction from individual slits sine phi diffraction over phi diffraction squared. So the single slit diffraction pattern uh, will act as an envelope for the two slit interference pattern. Now remember that in Young's double slit experiment the interference maxima will occur at d sine theta equals m lambda. So this d was the distance between uh, two uh, slit centers or the, this is basically slit to slit separation distance. And uh, this is the condition for uh, constructive interference d sine theta equals m lambda. On the other hand, for the diffraction from individual slits, we have the diffraction minima occurring at a over 2 sine theta equals m lambda over 2. That's the first diffraction minimum. Or we have a sine theta equals m lambda. So if we combine these two, uh, knowing that the first diffraction minimum will occur at a sine theta equals uh, lambda, if d sine theta is m lambda and a sine theta is lambda at the same time, if we have the ratio d slit to slit separation divided by the slit width a is equal to an integer m, this is going to correspond to an interference maximum in Young's double slit experiment overridden by the diffraction minimum. For example, if we have d18 micrometers, a3 micrometers, this will correspond to 6. So that will imply that 6th interference maximum, m equals 0 is the 0th maximum in the double slit interference, is aligned with the first diffraction minimum, so it will be overridden. So how does this work? Uh, so this is our... Uh, Young's double slit result. So you can see this uh, cosine square theta dependence. And then this is our uh, single slit diffraction result. So this is our sinc phi squared function. So we have two different phase differences, one coming from the interference of rays in, in two different slits and one coming from the interference of rays uh, from upper half and lower half of a single slit. So the, this diffraction pattern acts as an envelope, that's the blue dashed curve, that controls the intensity of regularly spaced interference maxima. So um, we have the central bright and then we have the uh, secondary maxima in the diffraction. But, but now, uh, since we have uh, the interference uh, effect from the two slits, so we also have this uh, these fringes corresponding to the um, interference of the uh, coming of the rays coming from two slits. So you can see that when we have a diffraction minimum here, this may correspond to what would have been a maximum in the double slit experiment. And indeed, numerically, I have shown that if d over a is six, sixth interference maximum is overridden by a diffraction minimum. So we have the combined effect of the double slit interference and the diffraction from individual slits described by this intensity distribution. So to summarize, uh, for the single slit diffraction pattern, uh, when we're talking about interference of rays coming from upper and lower half of the slit, the intensity distribution is described by a maximum intensity multiplied by sine phi over phi parentheses squared. Sine phi over phi is called the sinc function, which has a limit as phi goes to zero equals to one. So um, the intensity is maximum at uh, zero phase difference. 
if we check the condition for uh, destructive interference for rays coming from upper and lower half of the slit, the first diffraction minimum corresponds to a path difference A over sine theta, A over 2 sine theta equals lambda over 2. So uh, if we look at the path difference divided by lambda, this must be equal to the phase difference divided by 2 pi. So this is our phi that appears in this intensity distribution. And we do recover the condition for destructive interference, m equals plus minus 1 plus minus 2, etc. Sine theta dark is m lambda over a. So be careful about m equals 0. That actually corresponds to a central bright. Uh, now, if we combine our result from Young's double slit experiment with single slit diffraction, we see that we have a cosine square a phi interference over two dependence multiplied by sine uh, phi dif diffraction divided by phi diffraction parentheses squared. This actually tells us that the single slit diffraction acts as an envelope for the a double slit interference pattern and it is possible to have an interference maximum overridden by the uh, diffraction minimum. So this actually occurs uh, at uh, sixth interference maximum uh, for the case where we have slit to slit separation 18 micrometers and slit width 3 micrometers. So uh, let's go back to Young's double slit experiment actually to remember this um, result for the in intensity distribution. So remember that in the Young's double slit experiment, we, uh, we instead of adding the phasers, we've actually looked at the uh, algebraic sum of two electric field components and use this trigonometric identity here uh, to find that uh, the, uh, max, uh, uh, the total electric field is given by 2e0 cosine phi over 2 multiplied by an oscillating function and because the pointing vector is 1 over mu0 e cross b uh, which has an average value e max squared over 2 mu0 c it's proportional to e max squared so 4e0 squared cosine squared phi over 2 where phi was our phase difference 2 pi over lambda d sine theta so this is uh, this had an a distribution given by uh, no envelope here but in experiment we have seen that we have this envelope which we couldn't explain at that point now we know the explanation this actually envelope corresponds to the uh, single slit diffraction from individual uh, slits so we have the combined effect of so we have another slit here these two rays coming from these two slits interfere but also um, we have upper and lower half of the single slits interfering, giving us this combined effect of um, the sinc function squared multiplied by cosine squared phi interference over 2.